G'day guys, Dan and Zach here from the Australian Reptile Park. It's come to our attention and we've even seen ourselves quite a few snakes moving around already this year, which means we're coming to an early snake season. Now the majority of snake bites that do occur in this country come from two things, people trying to catch or kill the snake themselves. Don't do those two things and you really do reduce your chances of being bitten by a snake dramatically. We're also going to show you a couple of ways to stay safe for this snake season. Right, a couple of ways we can keep snakes out of our yards. Keep your grass nice and short, no clutter in your gardens, and try and uh, minimize any wood piles or uh, timber around the yard. We try to make the houses as unappealing to snakes as possible. If you are unfortunate enough to come across a snake in your backyard, make sure you call a licensed professional to come and get it. So don't try and uh, catch or kill the snake. If you are unfortunate enough to be bitten, uh, we're going to show you the exact way to apply the correct first aid. Now I'm going to show you guys the appropriate first aid that we use in Australia for Australian terrestrial snake bites. When treating snake bites in Australia, immobilisation and the use of a pressure immobilisation bandage like the one I'm holding right now is crucial. The majority of people that are bitten in Australia are bitten on the hand, wrist, ankle or foot. If you've been bitten on the wrist, you're going to wrap the bite site two to three times, make your way down towards the end of the limb, leaving your digits exposed and then slowly making your way back up again. When you're applying the bandage, you don't want the bandage to be too tight. You want to use the same amount of pressure that you would use on a sprained wrist or ankle, making your way all the way up towards the top of the limb, using the entirety of the bandage. If you have a second bandage, you can apply that over the top. Once you've applied the bandage, you want to mark the bite site, and then you want to seek immediate medical attention. Sometimes when people encounter snakes in the wild, they will mistake what's called defensive posturing for aggression. Take for example this tiger snake. This tiger snake in the wild wants to eat a frog, maybe about the size of its head or just a little bit bigger. It doesn't see a human as a potential food source. It sees you as a potential predator. So what a tiger snake will do, will flatten itself out, not too dissimilar to how a blue tongue will flatten itself out to make itself look nice and big. The snake is giving you a warning that it doesn't want to bite you and it just wants to be left alone. Another great example of that would be an eastern brown snake. When an eastern brown snake will rear up in that iconic S position, that is the snake saying, leave me alone please, I don't want to deal with a big giant human, I just want to escape. Thanks for watching guys, we hope you enjoyed that video about our amazing snakes here in Australia. We love snakes here at the Australian Reptile Park, so make sure you come and visit us anytime and learn more about these beautiful, beautiful animals. I'm Dan. I'm Zach. We'll see you next time. Catch up.